I watched the presidential debate yesterday, and I would like to give you guys my own opinion on it. Let's start with Trump. To be honest, he's not qualified to run a country like the United States. I, I doubt he's qualified to run any country, to be honest, um, because his personality will probably get him killed if he tries his hand at politics in other major countries on this planet. Um, I, I don't think he would be capable of maneuvering himself into a position of power, true power that is, okay? To become a leader in this era, you either need to become an obedience puppet of a foreign country uh, or play your role as a vassal uh, to represent the interests of your funder and your ruling elite oligarchy. Or the second option, uh, you have to be extremely careful, cautious, cunning, calculating, Make sure you're surrounded by loyal friends and allies that are willing to take a bullet for you while you climb that power ladder into position. Maybe that's the reason why the US establishment deep state didn't think he could win back in 2016. Uh, I'm not sure if he thought he could win. What I can see regarding Donald Trump if he gets elected is that he might accelerate the disintegration of the current rule-based international order but i don't think he can fundamentally change the internal embedded problems in the united states i i think the current ruling elites are just too powerful for someone like trump to handle by himself but he will be battling the internal agency throughout his presidency and will allow more breathing room for the rest of the world to uh, de-risk from the United States. At the end though, um, I do think that Trump in power, we have a better chance to avoid World War III. Okay, Joe Biden. I first came to the United States 30 years ago when I was 10 years old. After graduation, I became a consultant and I travel around the world. Of all the countries I've been in, I love United States the most. More than I love China, by the way. If you talk to me three years ago, before my son was born pre-COVID, I had close to no interest in geopolitics, okay? Uh, I'm in the tech sector. One of the reasons why I'm not interested in politics is because the political infighting in China it's very ugly. I got a taste of that through my father's network and friends, which is why I said someone like Donald Trump is unlikely to survive in the political landscape in the developing countries. And sometimes I get this audience in my comment section talking about how US was built intentionally so the presidential power is weak and limited. So you do not get those bloody violent dictators, right? Okay, I get your point. Especially if you look at the modern European-led imperial colonial history, it is very violent. Still, I mean, there should be like some kind of bottom line, red line, minimum requirement to become the president of the United States. Every time I look at Joe Biden, I remember this scene from Law of the Ring. He's not welcome. Why should I welcome you, Gandalf Stormcrow? A just question, my liege. Lord of Rohan? In my previous video, I talked about how Tang Dynasty of China fell. And maybe more or less many other Chinese dynasty and Western civilization fell the same way. Now, I want to point out something more unique about Chinese history. Uh, China for majority of our 5,000 years of history during powerful dynasties, we are the unipolar power of our own corner of the world, right? There's really no nearby civilization that can challenge Chinese dynasty for majority of our existence. And whoever did invade and conquer us, 
uh, end up being absorbed into our culture and our society, our civilization, because the conqueror often do not have the sophistication to run the entire country without ruining the whole country, right? That's why Yuan Dynasty, ran by the Mongolians, uh, were very short-lived. Unlike other civilizations around Mediterranean, in which competition is more fierce and any cities, states, and empires need to stay vigilant in order to survive. So when you are in a safe and secure unipolar environment, your leadership, your elites get lazy and greedy easily, right? And mismanage the country because there's no outside force to put a check and balance on you. And in the last four or five hundred years of Western colonial history, there's not a single empire, including the British Empire, that became so dominated and reached such a comfortable position as the United States became since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And I'm just amazed by how fast the sloth sets in. In China, even if we can see the dynasty decline, it usually takes a century or so because of the lack of external challenge. You can half-ass your job and just drag the dead horse along for centuries until the next dynasty, right? During those last few decades of a dynasty, you do not get real rulers. You get those prime ministers or eunuchs who run the country in a way that benefits only their own interests. And they keep the emperor entertained with his beautiful mistress, for example. If the emperor get too nosy, they will be removed, you know, by poisoning or something. And a new six-year-old kid will be replaced and become the new puppet vassal ruler of the kingdom. And to me, Joe Biden really gave me those kind of vibe, you know. In the United States right now, you guys are really floating that gas pedal towards a cliff. So I really don't know whether to laugh or to cry about this. Making sure that we continue to strengthen our healthcare system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with the COVID. Excuse me with. Um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. In China, if you are in the older days, and if you see that thing sitting on your throne, what a wise man would do is that he would take his wife, his kids, and find like an isolated mountain or island and move there, wait until the turbulence era, the civil war, the famine, all those to end, right? And the new ruler and dynasty will be ushered into power and, and then you can move back down into civilization. I mean, what do you do here in the West? Do you just pick a god, a, a church, and just start praying? Is that it? Whether it is Jesus Christ, you know, Holy Mary or Mohammed. What do you do? Just pick one and pray? My mother is a very dedicated Christian. She spread the word of God across China and got herself into many troubles with the Chinese government. And my father had to go to the police station and bail her out several times. She tried it 30 years, okay, to convince and convert me, but she couldn't. My my brain is just too complicated. I can't. I, I just can't read a book and believe. But Joe Biden, my dear Brandon here, I think he has done it. I, I look at him and say, oh yes, we need God. If he becomes the president again, I'm going to start going to church. In fact, I will kneel in front of our Lord Jesus Christ and shout, you know. Lord, save us. We cannot take this for another four years. You know what? I think I still... Yeah. I, 
my mom left this to me, okay? King James Bible. I'm going to start reading this again. No war in our nation's history has ever been so violative of our conscience, our natural national interests, and so destructive of our moral standing before the world. No enemy has ever been able to cause such damage to us as we inflict upon ourselves. The inexorable decay of our urban centers has flared into terrifying domestic conflict as the pursuit of foreign war absorbs our wealth and energy. Squalor and poverty scar our cities as our military might destroys cities in a far-off land to support oligarchy to intervene in domestic conflict. The president who cherishes consensus for peace has intensified the war. In answer to a cry to stop the war, it has brought tauntingly to one minute's flying time from China to a moment before the midnight of world conflagration. We are offered a tax for war instead of a plan for peace. Men of reason should no longer debate the merits of war or means of financing war. They should end the war and restore sanity and humanity to American policy.